just before we continue with our laboratory exercise L60, which is autopsy hash lookup module, uh, let's take a look at the corresponding handout. So as mentioned in autopsy uh, training videos, sometimes the names of the files, locations of the files, extensions of the files, uh, may not exactly match um, uh, the true content of the information stored in these files. And sometimes file sizes uh, can also be misleading and cannot be trustworthy in the process of forensic data analysis. So uh, using MD5 and SHA-1 uh, algorithms generate values derived from the actual file content and allow us to keep track of the content of individual files, be able to compare them and be able to identify certain files that may be labeled as suspicious. And uh, again, let's uh, review very quickly the basics of MD5 uh, rules. Mm. So we have MD5 as a message digest algorithm. So this is a hash function or um, a forensic hash function. So generally speaking, MD5 is 128-bit uh, value, uh, which normally is uh, written as hexadecimal digits like this. So each hexadecimal digit um, is occupying four bits of information. So that's the way it looks like. And so MD5 is just a function that takes certain input. So this is an example of input, and this is the resulting computed uh, hash value. So any small change like adding a character or modifying some character somewhere in the text uh, should result in a significant uh, change. Um, in the resulting message digest. It is also valid to compute MD5 and other forensic hash um, uh, algorithms um, to, 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 to give them an empty input. Basically, this is the empty MD5 value for a file or uh, some other media, which is empty. Basically, the size of the media is zero. Similar to MD5, we have another uh, um, forensic uh, hash algorithm, which is called SHA-1, Secure Hash Algorithm 1. And it uh, generates a 20-byte size uh, or 160-bit long uh, hash value. So again, the same inputs uh, or similar inputs that we had on the previous page would generate uh, specific uh, results uh, of SHA-1 values just like this. And this is the result of an empty input uh, SHA-1 uh, secure hash. So the odds of two dissimilar files having the same hash is uh, something I have difficulty pronouncing, but you can realize that this is um, a, a very, very um, a small probability that uh, uh, a dissimilar file will have the same hash result. If two files have the same hash, one can safely assume that these files are in fact the same uh, bit for bit. So that's very important. And the federal government keeps hash libraries for known programs, uh, hacking tools, and contra contraband, uh, like illegal to possess files. So that could be both images and videos, but also uh, illegal uh, programs, like um, hacking software, for example. So the two cryptographic hashes that we're discussing here uh, within the context of our autopsy uh, digital forensic tool, both commonly used to identify the content uh, uh, using the result as an index of both good uh, items and bad items, uh, also known as good lists and bad lists. So National Software Reference Library is a government organization that contains about 26 million file hashes suitable for good listing. Okay, so uh, we will be able to uh, download uh, an index uh, for um, 
uh, NIST, NSRL, uh, and uh, be able to attach it to our case when we're examining uh, our data sources. So this number, of course, is not frozen as the new versions of operating systems are released, as new popular software is released, uh, both for businesses and gaming uh, uh, and any other um, popular software. Uh, typically, uh, software libraries are submitted for National Software Reference Library for indexing so that it's easier to maintain uh, and identify items on this uh, side of things, the good lists. Basically, uh, when we know that the file is part of an operating system or Microsoft Office uh, 360, then uh, we don't have to really worry about that component and uh, spend any time examining it. Uh, we can have a pretty great level of confidence that we can just even exclude items present on a good list when this list is part of our uh, configuration of our uh, autopsy case uh, that we can uh, simply uh, not worry about the, these things and even exclude them from the view. So there's also publicly available bad listing databases for hashes of malware. So virus total and malware hash uh, registry are um, those that you can Google and you can basically attach those to, to your uh, to your cases as well. Other bad listing databases are maintained by law enforcement and they contain hashes of contraband files such as child abuse images and videos. Okay, so instead of being discarded, these images are constantly um, added to the bad listing databases and uh, those are not available for public download but rather to law enforcement agencies only. National Software Reference Library is a technology project to fight crimes involving computers. So the project of the National Institute of Standards and Technology, of course a government organization, and supported by DHS, FBI, federal, state, and local law enforcement. So it provides this uh, um, in a very extensive list of hashed values both MD5 and SHA-1 uh, for parts of commercial software packages, operating system, business applications, video games, and anything else that uh, is popular and is in wide circulation. Uh, the sets, uh, the reference data sets um, with a list of uh, hash uh, lookups for files um, uh, are distributed distributed for Windows, Android, and iOS uh, operating systems. So you can find out more uh, on the NIST uh, government website. And uh, the rest of this uh, handout, of course, will look very familiar to you because uh, you probably already looked uh, at the video covering uh, this um, uh, specific hash lookup in just module within a topsy and uh, the next step for us is to switch over to our laboratory handout and start looking uh, at uh, features related to hash lookup um, inside a topsy case environment <laughs>